What is up, everybody? Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to our AP cram session. This is kind of my exam structure, last minute tips. This is what you want to watch the night before. So if you're watching this a couple weeks out, just wait until the night before um, to watch this. We we'll go over it just to kind of some last minute things because honestly, the night before, it's not even worth trying to study and memorize eight, you know. 800 years of history. Um, so here's the deal. First thing I always say is know your time periods. Know these dates. Know what's going on in each time period because when you get to a multiple choice question and it says something about the 16th century, you should know that's the 1500s and your mind should immediately go to what is happening in that time period because Honestly, that's the biggest clue they're trying to give you. And if you know what's happening in the time period, usually you can deduce or at least eliminate some questions or some multiple choice. Also, if there's an SAQ or an LEQ question and it asked about something from 1450 to 1750 and you're mixing that up with the next time period, you're done. So here's the deal. We have 1200 to 1450, regional empires. We have the belief systems and how they impact those regional empires. We have trade routes and we have the Mongols. All right, we got 1450 to 1750. Gunpowder Empire, Colombian Exchange, Age of Exploration, and European Colonization. We got 1750 to 1900, Enlightenment, Political Revolutions, Industrial Revolutions, Imperialism, Migration, and then 1900 to 2001, World Wars, Cold War, Decolonization, and Nationalism, Globalization. Screenshot this. Take a picture of it. You got to know these. You should have these memorized off the top of your head. You should know five things that happened um, from 1750 to 1900. This is the breakdown of how much each is worth. I just want to point out one thing that you'll notice. Um, we have the first time period of 1200, circa 1200 to 1450 is about 16 to 20 percent of the exam. All the rest of them are about 24 to 30 percent. So if you're going to focus on something, or if you have focused on something, the first time period is really the least of the importance of them in terms of how much they're weighted. But you will notice there, this is how they're broken down units one and two, three and four. Et cetera, you can read that and get the tip. So here's like the main kind of gist of some stuff. I move myself out of the way here. Here's the main kind of gist of a couple of things. First is the multiple choice. 55 minutes, 55 questions, 40% of your grade. Here's my tips. Number one, don't skip questions and go back to them. If you get to number two and you're like, I don't know this, I'm going to skip it and come back at the end. Don't do that because each multiple choice has a document with it. And if you skip two, by the time you get to 55, you don't remember what document two said. And then you got to reread the document again. So as you're going through, answer the questions to the best you can and then circle it and go back to it again if you have time, if you're not sure about it. But don't skip anything. Don't say, I'm going to come back to this later because odds are you're not going to have time to do that. So whatever your first instinct is, is just roll with it. Number two, pace yourself. 20 minutes in, look at the clock and you should be around question 20. 40 minutes in, you should be around question 40. So make sure you're on that pace. If you're really far behind, that lets you know you got to pick up the pace. But hopefully over the course of this year, you've been working on pacing and you kind of know what your speed is. Number three, don't read every word of the document. You just don't have time for long passages to read every single word. And part of this goes with number four, which is I would always look at the first multiple choice question after the document before you read the document. Usually, not 100% of the time, that first doc, that first question refers directly back to the document. It's almost like a reading comprehension type of question. So if you read that first question and then read the document, you'll know what you're looking for. Um, and then most likely the next two or three questions will relate to something else. But you can go, always still have time to go back. So if you last tip, if you run out of time, if you're on question 50 and there's 30 seconds left, don't go A, B, C, D for A. Don't like go in some kind of pattern for the answers. Pick one letter, go C. I don't know why I always say C. Pick C for the last and just put C for all those questions you didn't have because odds are at least one of those five last questions are C. But if you guess A, B, C, D, A, odds are you're not guessing right. You're just, your luck is not that good. So those are the tips for the multiple choice. We have the short answer question, three short answer sets. 40 minutes, 20% of your grade. SAQ one is a secondary source written by a historian. Um, it could be two secondary sources. It could be one. SAQ two is a primary source. Could be a picture, could be words, which is someone who was there. And then SAQs three and four, you pick one. There's no stimulus with that. So there's no document that goes with SAQ three and four. You only pick one of those two. For number three, it's gonna be between 1200 and 1750. And number four is 1750 to 2001. So you can, if you know one, um, if you know the more modern stuff better, focus on four, but look at the question, see what you got. Um, choose wisely for these. Make sure, take a minute and like really look at it and think if you can answer all three parts. Sometimes people look at 
the first part, A, and they're like, oh, I got this. And then by the time you get to C, you're like, dang, I picked poorly. So make sure you look at all three questions. I Different teachers teach different things on this. My thought is three sentences for each. No matter what the first word is, some people are like, if it says identify, just pick one, one sentence. Three sentences for each. First sentence should be your topic sentence. One way in which the secondary source shows this is blah, 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 blah. And then top, sentence two, evidence. Cite something specific, fact, evidence, something from the document, something very detailed, oriented, that the reader knows that you know what you're talking about. And the third one, connect that specific evidence back to how it's answering the question. All right, so three sentences for each one. Also, all four historical time periods, historical time periods, these, all four of them will be covered in, the, in these four questions. So you're going to see a little bit from each time period. Everything will be covered in there. So it's not focus on one time period over the other. Next part, the DBQ. Um, hopefully you've been spending all year on this. It's 60 minutes. That's 15 minute, re 15 minute reading period, 45 minutes to write. Although after that 45 minutes writing period is up, you still have more time because the writing for the DBQ and LEQ is all lumped together. So you get a 15 minute reading window. Then after that 15 minutes is up, you can open up your essay booklet and you can write whatever you want, DBQ, LEQ, and you you have an, um, an hour and 25 minutes to write that in the, as much as you want between the DBQ and LEQ. The DBQ is 25% of your grade. So start with the DBQ first. Some people are tempted to start with the LEQ first. Don't. You want to make sure you finish the DBQ. Some tips. Number one, read and understand the question. Always for every essay question, everything you do, read and understand the question. Make sure you understand what it's saying before you start writing. Because if you get halfway through and you realize you misread the question, you're going to be in trouble on time. Number two. Each document, you should always read the document. So when you get to document one, your thing going through your mind is, how does this document answer that question I just read? When you get to document two, how does this document answer that question I just read? And when you're annotating on the side of the document, you want to annotate how it's answering the question. That's the only thing you want to do when you're reading these documents. How is this helping me answer the question, evaluate the extent to which, blah, blah, blah. Um, you don't need to use every document, but I say use every document. You only need to use six correctly, but if you do all seven and one of them is messed up and you misread it, you still have six correct and you'll get the point for that. So make sure you use, I would use all seven. Also for the HIP, historical context, intended audience purpose, perspective of the author, you only need to do three correct. I suggest if you're good on pacing to do it with all seven because you only need three of them right. Also, the outside information piece, remember, the outside information has to help you prove your topic or thesis. It can't be some random fact that's like, that just off is an offshoot of what's going on. It has to help answer the question. So make sure your outside information is not just expanding on a little word in the document, but it's helping prove your topic. Um, last two things. This, the DBQ is usually on a topic that you know something about, but it probably wasn't like a major focus on like, a day or two that you spend in class. So for example, like railroads in India, you should know that the British helped build railroads in India when they imperialized, but you probably didn't spend much more than like a couple minutes on that or someone mentioning something about it. But you'll know that a topic like that is going to connect to imperialism. Um, and imperialism is the overarching theme. Portuguese and Muslims interaction in the Indian Ocean trade route. The theme is trade, which is the entire unit two or unit four, um, so trade and European exploration and gunpowder empires is the key to that. But the specific question is more detailed than what you knew. So the question is detailed. I would like to say there's like an umbrella topic and you should know that umbrella topic. And then the question is really like a specific thing under the umbrella. L L A. So we got this topic. Uh, the DBQ will only be on 1450 to 2001. It'll be specifically somewhere within that time period. It could be one of the time periods, it could cross over two time periods, but it will not be on circa 1200 to 1450. Um, last but not least, the LEQ, you have 40 minutes to do this. This is an addition to the DBQ time. So if you go long on the DBQ by 10 minutes, you got 30 minutes to do the LEQ. If you spend 20 extra minutes on the DBQ, you got 20 minutes for the LEQ. This is 15% of your grade, so it's 10% worth, 10% less than the DBQ. DBQ is more important, but you don't want to get to the point where you don't get to do the D, the LEQ. So you have three options. Option one is twelve is from somewhere between 1200, 1200 to 14, 1200 to 1750. Um, option two is 1450 to 1900, and this should say 1200. Um, option three is 1750 to 2001. So it's going to be somewhere in that time frame. It might not be the whole entire time period, but it's somewhere in there. 
pick wisely. You have three options. Make sure you read each question and figure out which one you have the most idea to write about. Um, number four here, pace yourself on the DBQ. You don't want to spend all of your time on the DBQ and then have 10 minutes left for the LEQ. I've heard stories of that before. That's not ideal um, because you've got to organize your thoughts before you start writing. Also, answer it in a specific format. You don't want to just write about whatever. You want to either write it as a change over time essay, a comparison, you know, similarity and difference essay, or a cause and effect essay. So you want your essay to be structured with your thesis and topics in that format. So if you do change over time, you might say it's similar with this, but different with this. And then you might have a paragraph on um, what changed and two paragraphs on what stayed the same. Um, your call. Also, please don't forget, have topic sentences. You should have topic sentences for every essay you write in the body paragraph for everything you ever do. But in this, for the, both the DBQ and the LEQ, each of your body paragraphs should start with one change that resulted if you're doing a change in continuity or one effect of the trade was blank. Okay, so you want something specific and you want your topic sentence to say what that specific similarity or difference or change or continuity or cause and effect is. So that's what I got. That's a quick overview, 11 minutes. Um, good luck studying. You know, hopefully these tips will help out and uh, it works out. Good luck.